All right, all right. What's going on, Legacy Life? I appreciate you guys for making the time to jump on our Monday night calls. We do these calls every Monday, 7 p.m. Mountain Standard, Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And we always want to uh, have someone on, whether, you know, on somebody else's team, our group, just alliance in general. Um, we invite them to the call just because, you know, we know that um, whoever we're going to have on is going to add a lot of value to everyone that's on. And so make sure that you get all your new people on Monday nights um, at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, this is a big week because we have a big event coming up in this weekend. And um, for those of you guys that don't know me, my name is David, <clears throat> Dave, a.k.a. Panda. And um, I saw this opportunity that we are going to talk about um, probably like almost three years ago from my good friend, Nick Greco. And at the time when I saw it, I was in a place in my life where I was really just, you know, I was kind of lost. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was driving for Lyft. The company that I was with for 10 years kind of just went under. So um, I honestly did not, um, I, I, I did not want to go back into a sales entrepreneur um, gig because for 10 years I did that and company went under and it kind of just, you know, I had negative opinions about it, but then, you know, my good friend, Nick, I trust in him and, you know, he got it started with the Alliance and was kicking butt like right off the bat. And then maybe about a couple months in, um, Andy Albright, the owner of the company had a big event out here and, you know, he told Nick to bring some people on, you know, to the event. And I went, Dan was there and got to see the Alliance, you know, as, as a whole and got to see the culture, got to meet Andy and, you know, went on his plane and just, you know, he painted this vision of what could be you know, if we really put our heads down and just, you know, focus and man, it's been a blessing just because of all the things that we've been able to do, the money that we've been able to make, but not only that, the people we meet, like just the impact that we can have. And, um, you know, going back to, to you know, the people that you can meet, um, I want to introduce you guys to a good friend of mine who I actually met last year at NACON, um, Erica, that was her first big event. And we'll, we'll, we'll get in, you know, we'll, we'll dive into the event and what it did for her, but you know, when I met her, um, I was, we were turned up. <laughs> it was after a night out uh, from one of the trainings. And, uh, you know, she was with the group. I was with the group. We all kind of, uh, you know, started talking and eventually we exchanged numbers and then we stayed in touch. Um, that was her first event. And then next thing I know, I see her literally throughout the year, just, you know, blow up with the company. I mean, the girl hit agency manager first year in, she doesn't have any um, you know, cause she's young and I'll let her share her story, but not, not really like direct sales experience necessarily with like a specific company, but she hit agency manager first year in, she did over six figures and issued paid. Um, not only that, but she also qualified for Alaska, I believe in October. And, um, I mean, this girl is just getting started. I mean, like when me and her talk over the phone, it's all always about the Alliance. And we always like, um, she always helps me like painting the vision of what could be because she's a visionaire. She literally um, is all in on the alliance. She's under Olga Mathis. A lot of people call her mini Olga, um, but she that's that's her sidekick, man. And, and, and I'm glad that she sees that at a young age where she sticks to successful people. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to welcome her really quick. Erica, you on the call? I'm here. Thank you, Panda. <laughs> um, let me see your energy drink one more time. Woo. <laughs> um, she needed some caffeine. Anyways, um, just really quick, Erica, um, could you just kind of tell everybody, um, you know, I know you're a year in, but can you just kind of tell everybody your background, you know, where you live, where you're from, and just, you know, before we get into uh, Alliance stuff, like what were you doing before the Alliance? So like Panda said, I'm director Jason and Olga Mathis. I'm here in Fort Lauderdale. I'm 26. And before I found out about the Alliance, I was selling custom sneakers online. So I would paint and customize sneakers and sell it online. Um, I've always sold online and that was like what I primarily did. But I knew I wanted to get out of it because it just took so much of my time and I had no guidance. I was doing everything myself. And so a neighbor had told my sister about insurance and I decided to get my license. She didn't follow through with it. And so for three days I studied, I took my test. And then the lady who's my neighbor like disappeared. She was nowhere to be found. I didn't have any help, but I told everyone I was doing insurance. I'm like, I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna make tons of money in insurance. 
And then I visited family out of uh, Fort Lauderdale because I was living in Orlando and I met Olga and right away she, we had like a mutual friend. Um, right away. I was like, I know that she's like Olga and Jason are going to help me. Like this is the opportunity I wanted. I just need someone to explain the business and how to do everything. So I was going back and forth from Orlando to Fort Lauderdale every like two weeks. Um, and then I decided to just move here because I wanted to be around the people doing it. Uh, so I was like, yeah, kind of like Olga's mini me. I would always listen to what she told me. I got so my ticket. Okay. So before NACON, because I know you're getting there. So before, so before you moved to Fort Lauderdale, you were living in Orlando. Your neighbor, right, was the one that I guess got you kind of like hyped about insurance. Was she in the Alliance? No, she was with another organization. Okay. And then through a mutual friend is how you met Olga, though, that your mutual friend was in the Alliance. So I had like a family member that had a friend. Uh, I don't, I think she used to work in the Alliance. I don't okay. know. I just got a call from Jason. He was like, come to my house. It was like eight that night. And I thought it was weird. And so I just, <laughs> I was like, I, I'm literally four months. Cause I had quit what I was doing. I started the insurance and I was, I didn't make any money. So I was like, what the hell? I'm just going to go. So I went to their house that night and met with them. And then they, what, painted the picture of what this, this can be um you know how to get started and then obviously they talked about natcon i'm sure right 2023 right so it's a few what, what made you pull the trigger like how did that how did that conversation go um it was a few weeks before natcon like a couple weeks and so olga had just mentioned natcon um and like a hot spot that was that week and so when she was just telling me to do things i wanted someone to tell me what to do like, cause before I had nobody, I couldn't even call anyone. No one would answer. No one would text me back. And so whatever she told me to do, I just kind of did it. Cause I saw that it worked for them. So I was like, if I follow what they tell me to do, it has to work for me too. Nice. All right. So you get your ticket to NACON. Was there any like obstacles like that you had to overcome to get to, well, it was in Dallas last year, right? Yeah. To get to Dallas. Like, was there anything in your way that you're just like, at first, maybe you're like, maybe I shouldn't go, but then you finally just said, let's do it. Like anything you had to overcome? Not really. Like right when Olga told me, I was just like on it. I was like booking my plane ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Well, let's talk about NACON. Like last year when you were there, like what was it, you know, from the from the time that you got there? Because I know that you had, you had some big momentum after, but let's talk about NACON specifically. What was it that you think like hyped you up about it from day one to the last day? Like what, what, what got you excited about actually being at the event? So I think like everybody's stories and everyone on stage inspired me, but, but also like sidebar conversations, like meeting you and you telling me your story and even just um, getting like little nuggets here and there from people maybe necessarily like who aren't necessarily on the stage. Um, that's what really pushed me. I was like, all these people could do it. Um, so that's what pushed me to like get started. Right, right. Okay. And then, um, so you went to NatCon and then obviously you, ever since NatCon, because one thing that we're really big on is going to the events. Not only that, but you get like points to go to like the trips, right? So far you've been to every event, right? Like how important is it? Like, you know, when you, when you went to that event, how important was it for you to book your for uh, your ticket for the view, which I think was the next event in Denver. Right. Um, super important. Like I go to every event. I feel like after a while, like since they're every three months, I kind of feel my battery like going low. Like I've heard you even say that. It's so true. Like right when I go to an event after I'm like killing it, Yeah. Um, but I need it. Like if we didn't have the events, I don't, I don't think that it would push me. I would be as like motivated as I am. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I agree. One hundred percent. I mean, I feel like everyone needs a charge up, especially like right now. Right. You know, we're all I feel like some people are still in holiday mode and maybe maybe not the agent, but maybe like the people that we sit down with are still in holiday mode. So I feel like all of us just need like a recharge. And I'm so glad that NACON is this weekend because and I, I've told like my family, I've told like, you know, I knew I do a lot of volunteer work, you know, outside of the alliance. I'm like. After this weekend, I'm going to be like, like full steam ahead, you know, insurance. That's going to be what I'm going to be focused on because I'm trying to go to Cabo, like for sure. <laughs> um, okay. 
So you went to NatCon 2023. You had a great experience. You met a lot of great people. Tell us, all right, right after NatCon, did you just go and have immediate success? Or was there like some things that you had to, like that you, that you stumbled a little bit and had to kind of, um, you know, bring yourself back in and get some coaching? Like, was it success right away? Or how was it right after NatCon last year? Um, so after NatCon, I was super fired up, but also this isn't something I'm used to. Like I've never done work like this, obviously. And so when I had gotten back, like, like I said, I was traveling back and forth and true story the month after, like, so February issue paid $50. Like I wasn't doing great. And so <clears throat> I'd always go to rally points and listen to Olga Dial, but I was like horrified to get on the phones. Like I'm not. I wasn't so much of a people person. I sold shoes online. Like I didn't have to talk to anyone. I would just message. And so it was difficult for me, but I just got used to it because I just kept going and kept going. And like Olga always told me her first year, she did 3,500 in commission. And I'm like, well, if she's at where she is today, I just need to listen to her. So I just kind of, I went through it. Like I cried in my car a lot in the beginning and like, it wasn't easy. <laughs> But I just like kind of went through it. I'm like, I knew I could do it if I just followed the system and followed what everyone else was doing. Because if they can all succeed, I felt like, why not me? Right. So your first, so like right after, so you did, you, 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 I know that you now, like you're, you're a killer on the phones. You're a killer, like when you're with people, but like right after the event, you had some problems dialing, you had... What was it that, what was it that like brought it all back together? Just being around Olga, being around, you know, the Alliance. Like if someone, like, let me tell you, let me ask you this. Um, if you were to give advice and coach someone that was in your place and they're having kind of like some problems, like, you know, they were fired up and now they're not getting the responses that they want. Like, what would you say to them? Consistency. So like even through, I, it's like, don't quit because I felt like giving up so many times and even sometimes now I feel that way, but it, it gets better. Like I am getting better and I could see that with like my numbers. And so I just had to push through because there's plenty of times that I could have been like, because I've heard other people say this, like I suck at this, like this just isn't for me, but just like you need practice. You need to keep doing it. You need to get around the people doing it. Listen. So yeah, I just stay consistent. Like there's never... Like I'm, I, every week I still do it. Like I don't just quit and, or take off a week. Just, I just know I can get be so much better. Yeah. And that's one thing I admire about you because, um, when we first met, you know, like we, we, every now and then we'll text back and forth and you would tell me, like, I feel like sometimes you would tell me like, crap, like, I don't know if I could do this, but then next thing you know, you're like, I just submitted an app. I just submitted an app. And I feel like where you are today, like if you would have quit back then, um, I mean, just, just think about like how much, how far you've gone. Like, I'm proud of you. Like, I think that right now this is like the beginning of, I mean, you are like a mini Olga and I feel like you, ha you know that as well, you know, what, you know, where she is today. And I feel like that's what keeps you going too. Right. You're like, damn, like I could, I could be there. Right. At some point. Right. Yeah, of course. And even like people like you, obviously, like you vote. I remember in the beginning, you like sending me little emotional, motivational, like videos and stuff. Cause I was like, obviously, you know, not doing the best, um, mm -hmm. but I just like kept going through. And so like the people here are so positive. I remember when I started you telling me you're going to get your ring and I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and now <laughs> I so, and now you're about to get your ring this uh, yeah. on Saturday. That's awesome. Congrats. Um, okay. Now let's talk about like some technical stuff. So um, we talked about like, you know, what you did to overcome the dials, all that, you're human. We all go through that. Now, what leads, like from when you started, um, like what leads were you buying? Were they just mortgage protection? Were they final expense? Did you use like an online source? Like what leads did you buy from the beginning? Um, and then what leads did like got you to get better at this? And what, what I mean, what's your preference? Like if you, we can just kind of freestyle it. Like what, what do you, as far as the lead system that we have, what's your opinion on it? So I was doing direct mail leads. Um, when I first started, I would, I bought like brand new direct mail leads when I was like terrible. They were A leads. So like for the more expensive leads. And I remember 
then feeling, oh my God, I spent all this hundreds of dollars on leads. I'm not, but I made up for it like a few months later, once I started realizing how to do it. Um, and I still get direct mail leads. I go back a lot, to be honest, to my older leads. Um, and I, you like, do a lot of referrals. So I'll go back to clients and see if they, they're like family members need help or their kids, uh, their siblings. So th lately I've been doing a lot of referrals, but I still get direct mail leads. Okay. Like final expense, direct final mail expense, mortgage protection. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and are you like for when you first, first got started, did you set up a GMR? I didn't set up a GMR at first. And then I did um, a few months, like several months later, I set up a GMR, um, but I would have done that quicker. Yeah. Okay. And that's something that we'll talk about too. Like um, all the stuff that, you know, today, like how, you know, what would you do over again? But um, okay, cool. Well, like, so like the Alliance, so, you know, we all know that system is like a big thing that we have in the Alliance. Um, you're big on that because every time I talk to you, you always talk about rally points you always talk about, you know, um, sometimes you do like the night owl stuff with Olga and the team. Like, can you talk about that a little bit? Because I feel like you plug into a lot of stuff that Olga does. Maybe that's like a team thing that you guys do. But, you know, for someone new that maybe like jumped into this and, you know, they jump on a call here and there. They don't go to every meeting. Like how important is that, do you think, for a new agent if they want to be successful in this plugging in? The system right for me again i just listened to everything olga and jason told me so it was always about plugging into the system going to rally points i wouldn't have learned how to dial or talk to people or set appointments if i didn't go to rally points and listen to olga um and then i go to every hotspot like there's little like i said nuggets that i took from different hotspots although a three-hour meeting sometimes seems really long and like oh my God, am I getting all this training? And some new agents feel like that, but there is sometimes one little thing that I pick up in a meeting that helps me like tremendously. Um, and so I think it's super important. Also, I'm building a team. So I feel like if I don't do what I'm telling everyone else to do, like jump on the calls, go to the meetings. I also saw Olga as an example to me. So I just feel like I can't, I kind of can't push people or move people to go do things if I'm not doing it. So just like leading by example, um, but it helps me still. And, and as far as like uh, what you were saying about like building a team, cause I feel like, you know, we can make a lot of money selling, right? Like we can sell a final expense, you know, they front you the nine months and boom, that's a nice commission. But ultimately if you want freedom, you know, to, you know, in your life, you know, where you don't have to make decisions based off time and money, you know, literally, you know, do, do what you want. Money still coming in. You have to build a team, right? From the, from NatCon, like, did you leave NatCon and start recruiting or were you more focused on selling? Like, where were you at then compared to now when it comes to recruiting and selling? So I wanted to recruit right away. Um, and a lot of people who get started also have told me, oh, did you recruit like, did you recruit right away? Or am I supposed to wait to know, like, to know what I'm doing to recruit? But even uh, one of my biggest legs, Olivia, when she got started, I had met her uh, friend on social media, or I like knew of a friend of hers. And she ended up coming past the house when her friend's car broke down. So it was just like weird how we met. Um, and I just pushed her to Jason and Olga. Like, I did not know what I was doing. I just started. And so um, I wanted to recruit right away. And I knew even though I didn't have all the answers or know everything, I could just push them up. Um, so that helped me a lot. And now that you kind of, I guess, have, um, cause you sent me like, uh, like the number of people that you've brought in, you brought in a big amount of people to the business. Mm -hmm. So like, now do you feel comfortable when you bring someone in that you can lead them versus pushing them up? Or are you still pushing them up to your upline? So, um, I still always push them up. Like, Obviously I can, I know a lot more than I knew then. Um, but I'm always at rally points. Like I said, I'm always at hotspots. So of course, Jason and Olga are there and that helps me a lot having them. Um, but yeah, it's easier now because obviously I know 
I know what I'm doing a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what you see. That's one thing that you do. You like, oh, you don't you you're you don't like, I guess, compliment yourself, <laughs> but you, you're you kill it like all the time. Like you're always your numbers. You're always on the leaderboard on the math is group um, in the alliance group. You're always in the leaderboard. I think you're like right under me for like the Omaha uh, thing that we had last year, uh, oh, which no. uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. love Omaha. Um, OK, cool. So let me ask you this really quick, um, because obviously it seems like NatCon, like none of this would have happened, right? If you didn't make that decision to go to NatCon. Mm -hmm. So if someone's on the call right now, right? And, you know, they're maybe having some doubt, maybe they're having some obstacles from stopping them to go. I mean, it's literally like five days away on Friday. Um, what, what kind of advice would you give them, you know, you know, about, just going through and just going like if it, if it was like a team member of yours and they're giving you this um i would say that it's super important because it helps like with your learning curve like i don't think i would learn nearly as much as i did without the conventions um there's just when people want to get started fast it's like the convention is worth so much more than the price it is to get there um and you'll be like six months ahead at the least if you go to convention so it's it's worth it like spending the money to get to the convention is worth it right because i mean you could sell a policy even now you can sell a policy to a relative and there's uh -huh. your plane ticket you know you can sell two policies to two relatives and there's a plane ticket a hotel and you know some money to turn up right so you know if you're on the call i mean just look at erica like she is an example of what can happen to you if you just make that decision? All right, just decide, you know, cut the cord of what it cut of whatever's holding you back and just take a leap of faith. Because here's the thing, here's the thing that holds people back is sometimes they're like, you know, well, what if I don't make money, right? You know, well, what if I don't recruit anybody? Well, what if, what if I go and I don't learn anything, right? And and they focus on on this negative more right but you have but what's more empowering right the good or the bad because what if you do make some money like what if you go and then you come back and you're like Erica and you just start recruiting like crazy right what if you come what if you go there and you learn something that's going to help you make six figures right in one year i mean all the things that Erica accomplished happened because she made the decision to go to Nacon and because she made she went to Nacon i mean next thing you know Liv came on, right? Who's one of your biggest legs. And she came to the view because I I know Liv and I've met her. And now she's got, right? She's got her team going and she kind of has an, an idea of like how to lead someone. And it all happened because you made that decision. And mm -hmm. so if you're on the call, guys, and you're just kind of like on the fence about it, maybe you're kind of just like, should I really go? Just go. You're, I mean, you're already, you're, you're on this call, right? We're telling you to go, but just make that decision. Go and you'll, you, you don't know what's going to happen, right? Um, but I'm telling you right now, take a leap of faith, make that jump and just go because your story can be better than Erica's, you know, and we want, we want it to be, we want you to have to be successful and have success and be on these calls. Um, but anyways, sorry, Erica, I kind of just went unrambled a little bit. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Now, um, real quick, what is like your goal? So like 2023, that was kind of like your I guess rookie year. Are they considering that your like a full year or are you considered a rookie this year? Do you know? Do I know if it's considered I think your first two years? I don't know. I'm you know how kidding. the alliance has like a rookie like uh track it's your first two years, right? I don't know. I thought I thought it was like your first full year in the alliance. Mm -hmm. So did they count last year as your first full year or are they counting it this year? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, what, what, I mean, tell me real quick, like 2024, like what, what, what's it looking like for you? Like, what are you envisioning 2024 being like for you? What are your goals? Cause I know you, you were just on a call with Jeff Bright, which is a, an accountability call. So like, would, you know, would, do you mind sharing some of the, some of your goals for 2024 with the group? So, um, in, as far as recruiting, I definitely want to have at least one agency manager, um, under me. And I, as far as, production I know I'm going to do much better than last year like personal production so I want to at least double what I did last year um and obviously grow my team 
And what was a uh, what was that production number? Um, my, uh, a hundred and twelve thousand. Oh wow! So right about two twenty five to twenty four then this year. Maybe two fifty. <laughs> Maybe two. <250. laughs> Let's go. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. All right. And Cabo, obviously, plan on hitting Cabo. Yeah, of course. Okay. What What about as far as you like being um you know, uh, rank wise, I know district managers right around the corner. She mm -hmm. sent me her numbers like last year, you know, we stay in touch a lot. So she would send me her numbers. You almost hit it. You were like super close to hitting it. I was super close. I mean, I was thinking before national convention, I was super upset about that, but it's like, Oh, like I want to go for regional manager because I know I'll hit district manager. If I have that in my head. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So last year she would send me like little texts uh, of how close she got. She got really close. So I know that you're going to hit it this year, especially with the rock stars that you got coming with you um, to NatCon. So I can't wait to see what happens, Erica. Um, now, really quick, um, just for everything that you know today about insurance, right? If you could go back in time. So we'll use that energy drink as your time machine that you're drinking there. So if you could go back in time, right? To la this time last year, with everything that you know today about insurance, recruiting, selling, whatever, like what would you do different? What would you do more of? What would you do less? Break that down for us really quick. Now that you're, you've got more knowledge on on this business. So something I'm just getting better at um, now is tracking my numbers and scheduling. That's something that Jason is super big on. I like just had a call to go over my schedule, but it's my own business and I have to keep myself accountable. And um, although I was kind of doing that before, it's hard to manage your time and we don't have a boss and um, tracking my numbers to know where I'm going wrong. Like, cause I won't know if it's my like phone calls or, you know, I need to look at how many people I'm sitting with. So definitely like scheduling and keeping better track of my numbers. And that's so true. I'm glad you said that because the good thing about this business, right. Is that like, you're your own boss, but then the bad thing about this business is you're your own boss. Right. And so you have to like, you have to motivate yourself to, to, to be, be disciplined to your schedule. And one thing Mike Guerra says a lot, he says, you have to be a slave to your calendar. I look at Mike Guerra's calendar and even though his handwriting is crap, um, he, he like has like scribbles all over like 10 o'clock, 12. That's something I admire about Mike um, a lot is just like how he's such a slave to his planner. And so I have a planner similar to his, it looks exactly the same. And I literally just do the same thing, except my handwriting is a little neater. Um, awesome. So tracking your numbers. So what do you, what do you track? Can you kind of just break that down other than like your schedule? Like what else do you track um, in your business? So I track my dials, how many people I sat with, how many people I closed, um, how many apps, how much I submitted. And so I used to do everything on paper. And even apps I used to do on paper when I first got started. So I'm like, it's so much easier to just do everything. There's e-apps, there's Google Calendar. So I've been getting really good at tracking everything like on Google Calendar. I put all my appointments and that's something I wasn't good at also. And I'm getting better is becoming more organized because this is my business. So I have to get organized and like I said, track my numbers and um, scheduling. Okay. Yeah. And um, shout out to, I think Devon is on this call actually, but my boy Devon sent me this like Excel spreadsheet. Cause I was the same way, girl. I literally had like, I would track, I would track it like in my own way, you know, and then I saw like that some of the successful people, you know, some like Devon's very consistent. He's like a, um, we call a green, which is, um, is that an otter? Like someone that's very analytical, organized. Beaver. Yeah. Beaver. I'm sorry. So Devon, you know, shout out to you, bro, because he sent me an Excel spreadsheet and literally, um, I use it like exactly what he sends. I, it has like my policies that I sold, you know, I have one for recruiting as well. So, um, being organized is I'm telling you is key, especially like the more money you make and the more, policies that you sell, the more like it can get hectic, right? It can get crazy. Yeah. And so, um, but I'm glad that you said that. Awesome. So 
let's just wrap it up with this. You know, I know we've got a couple more minutes. I mean, we're 30 minutes in, but it's all good. Um, what, like, what advice would you give to an agent? Like, okay, you're, you're a year in, right? And you've told me some of the premiums that, that you sold today, right? I think you sold like a $200 a month. Yeah, whole life. I mean, like, what would you say to someone that's like, you know, that's saying like, I don't know if this is for me. Like, I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if it's, you know, the sacrifices that I make is going to be it. Like, how good is this business, Erica? Like, just tell that if you if you were to talk to an agent that you have that's maybe having some doubt, what would you say to them as uh, as far as like what this business can do for them and what it has done for you? Mm -hmm. So, like I said, usually what I tell people who first get started when they think like it's not for them or that it's hard is like just go through it like it's a process. Um, I just look at the people doing it, like I said, and if they can do it, I can do it. Um, but just being consistent and going through the process and going through the hard times, it's going to get better. Like I've seen growth and it's, it's been consistently getting better. Um, you just have to go through the times where you feel like it might not be right for you, or you don't know what you're doing, or you're not good at this. Um, because if you stay consistent, you'll get better. In the beginning, like, did you go, I know you, let's February aside, because you did a big 50 AP on February, but like March, April, was there times that you just like didn't sell in a week? Um, I've tried to, that's why the accountability calls are so good. Cause I, at least even in the beginning would try to sell one application. Like I never wanted to get on the call and I can't remember getting on the call after the $50 AP <laughs> where I wouldn't at least have one application. Even now I could be on vacation. I could be in Orlando visiting family. And I always try to at least submit one app. Usually I do more than one app, but I don't want to get on that call and say that I didn't submit anything. Cause like Jeff said, there's child whole life policies that are like $2 a month. I could literally walk outside and who it's $2 a month. You can't sell $2 a month. And so <laughs> like, I know I could do it. And yeah, it's just staying consistent um, each week and at least doing something. Um, so I'm all, I always try to at least do something, even when I'm like away or on vacation or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like one thing I heard a, a, a motivational speaker one time say, you know, whenever you're feeling like, you know, like kind of still and stiff and maybe you don't feel like you're doing he says motion creates emotion so if you start moving st shooting some texts out you know sh uh, reaching out to some to some old leads picking up the phone and just dialing it'll mm -hmm. change your tone like it'll change your mood of of how you feel in running this business motion can create emotion and it can change it for you you just got to move and do something um so I'm glad you said that, Erica. You're awesome. I appreciate your time. I know that you're uh, you're on Eastern time in Florida. Are you in Fort Lauderdale or Orlando right now? Fort Lauderdale. Lauderdale, okay. And when are you uh, flying into NatCon? Thursday? Thursday. Thursday, all right. And then uh, Saturday, you get your ring, right? Yep. Awesome. All right, girl. Well, I'll just, let's just leave it up. Let's leave it here. Um, we got a couple more minutes. I just want you to tell me just really quick, um, you know, what's something that like a big lesson that you learned since like a, like a life lesson, a business lesson that maybe you learned from being in the Alliance um, that has made you, you know, a better person, a better leader um, or just, you know, made your life better. Um, I think it's something Olga told me that really helps me because sometimes I get down and sometimes I get really high up, like super excited, like, I have a good week or a bad week. And she always says, put that, even when I have a good week, she like put that excitement into a bottle. Um, like I try to stay level. And then, cause she'll be like, what happened to that girl from last week who said she bare, like she barely could submit an application. And so whether I'm doing well or doing not so good, I try to stay level. And something that I learned at Breakthrough is to control my emotions. So I, again, I just try not to get too excited for the, the good weeks or the good months and not too low from the bad months and stay consistent. And I just keep going because I'll grow if I have that mindset. Awesome. 
I'm I'm so excited for you. Like the just you're so you're 26. You're a year in your agency manager. I'm for sure know that you're going to hit district manager. And then um, but your goal is regional manager. And I'm sure that you'll hit that. Um, any last words you want to tell to the group? We've got about 30 people in the call. Um, any anything that's in your heart that maybe you want to share with everyone before we wrap it up? Really? Like if you're thinking about going to NatCon, get your ticket because the first con conven convention really changed my life. And I don't think that I would have done as well or done nearly. I would have definitely not got agency manager if I didn't go to the first convention. I wasn't writing any applications. I don't even think I had written an app. So you don't have to be doing anything to go. Like if you're just first starting, go. It's like the best time to go. I'm super glad that the convention was like a couple weeks away when I got started because it's what helped me just get through it. Awesome. Awesome. Word of a wise young lady. I appreciate your time, Erica. Thank you so much. Guys, if you're on the call and you're like just, you know, having doubts about the business, about just, you know, picking up the phone and dialing, you could, there's, there, the best solution is going to be NACON. All right. And if you don't have your ticket, listen, there are tickets out there right now. Get on the Facebook page. People are hustling some tickets. <laughs> like, get on there, pick up a ticket. Who are you going to stay with? How are you going to get there? Like, that, all of that will come. All right. This is just part of your testimony. Like, you're never going to, like, in order to have a testimony, you have to go through a test, right? There's no message without a mess. And maybe, you know, God is like telling you, like, you need to be at this event that everyone's talking about that could better your life, but you're choosing all these things that are holding you back to keep you from that blessing. So make that decision, you know, just, just make the decision to go get your ticket. I promise you, once you get your ticket, all right, everything else will come, will come into place. There's people on the Facebook group that are like, you know, Hey, who needs a room or who needs a roommate? Like everything will come to plan. You just got to decide and be at that event. And I'm telling you right now, when you go to the event, be laser focused. We're going to have fun. We're going to party. We do all of that. That's how I met Erica party, but you're going to meet amazing people like her leaders that are, you know, doing a hundred thousand a week, <laughs> like, uh, Megan Wood, you know, Marcus Richardson, you know, Kyle and Nina Harry, like the math is you're going to meet all of them at this event and you're going to get some one-on-one -on -one time with them, but you got to be there. You know, it's one thing to watch the Monday calls, the Wednesday calls, you know, the calls that we, where we have, you know, guests like Erica, but like how, how different would it be? And I'm sure Erica, you can relate if you're like, you know, two feet away from them. Right. And they're actually pouring into you and you're learning from people that have what you want. One of the pieces of advice that I, that I, that has stuck with me the last 10 years is if you want what someone has, do what they do. All right. And if you do what they do, then you will have what they have. And at this event, all of the top earners, all of the top leaders will be there. So what does that say? If you want to make the money that they want to make, you should be there. If you want to plug, if you want to, if you want to be, you know, uh, what's uh, getting the rings, the recognition, you know, plug into the calls, plug into the meetings, go to the hotspots. Like there's no reason like there, like Erica isn't just in the top leaderboards of, of her math is group. She's not like, just like at, on accident. There's a reason that she's up in those rankings because she follows the systems. She goes to all the hotspots. She's on all the calls. And guess what? She's at all the events. She just told you she was at Breakthrough. She went to The View and you were at Family Reunion, right, <laughs> in Miami. So make sure that you guys go to these events because I'm telling you, they are the difference maker. That's when everyone's going to be charged up. And here's what's crazy is if you go to NACON, all right, you're going to be six months ahead. If you don't go to NACON, guess what? You're going to be six months behind wishing that you went to NACON, but then you let that little thing holds you back from your blessing don't let don't be that person make the decision go to natcon get your ticket we'll see you there bring somebody else if you can bring your auntie your mom your kids whoever now don't bring your kids because you want to be focused you can but make sure someone's watching them gotta stay focused all right thank you guys for hopping onto the call erica thank you so much for joining us thank you for being on and uh make sure if you go to natcon go meet that girl buy her a drink uh show us your tea that you're drinking and then do the woo. <laughs> uh, she's a good time. See you guys. Appreciate y'all being on the call. Thanks, Erica. Thank you.